Hey everybody, welcome to episode 121. So this is going to be a combination episode between Night Witches and Jade Falcon Freeborn. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look, now that both series have kind of ended, we're going to have a look at all the pilots and see really who was the best one. Um, I mean, it's hard. To, it's really hard to say who's the best pilot and who's not. Um, yeah, you could go by kills, you could go by number of deployments. Um, but when you, you think about the mechs they're in too, like Megasaur was constantly in a melee mech pretty much the whole time. <clears throat> when she got that Black Knight, she was just a murderess. She was just killing everything left, right, and center. So, you know, any other pilot in this same situation would have been probably just as effective. But, you know, we're just going to have a look and just see where everyone was at. But first, before we start that, we're going to go to the, mem uh, the memorial wall here. Now, we only did have one casualty in this series, and it was Red Comet, one of the earliest uh, mech pilots that we started off with. Starter, sorry, started off with. She was uh, picked up at day 137 and went to 1747 uh, day uh, <coughs> daytime. Um, ran 98 deployments, took 10 injuries, killed 68 mechs, pretty good, and 34 other kills. So... You know, she wasn't too bad overall. Um, I'm not going to go and, and show you how she died. If she took a head hit by a long tom mobile artillery, if you actually see the episode, it was just like, what the hell? We I had no clue what happened at the start, and then I figured out what had happened. It was most likely an airburst right above her head. But anyway, yeah, so that's that. Um, but let's go on to the mech warriors now, the ones that did survive. So, you know, we do have a fair number of mech warriors here, and I'm going to start from the... The latest back to the earliest um, sort of hires, and we're going to start off with um, Slim and and uh, Cloud here. Those are the sort of the last two pilots we picked up, and they they were just sort of extra pilots. They didn't go on very many missions. Um, the two of them kind of went on a few missions together um, with uh, heavy max just to clean up some of the. Uh, um, <clears throat> contracts that were kind of left on the planet. So let's have a look at Slim here. She actually, actually was actually pretty good if you actually look at it overall. Now, I'm not going to look at the days with the company because at first I was thinking we could go with deployments and days with the company and stuff like that, but some of the mech warriors didn't actually fight in every single episode. So it's kind of, the number of days with the company, it's like, it's really, really, I think it's really irrelevant. Most likely, most of the, what we're going to look at here is the number of deployments with mech kills and other kills. Um, mech kills, of course, being the most important. Important Other kills, I think, are things like turrets and vehicles and stuff, right? So, with Slim, she had three deployments. Didn't take any injuries and didn't eject, but she had eight mech kills, which is actually really good over a two-for-one ratio. And a two-to-one ratio with um, other kills. So, she killed uh, two pretty much every, episode, or every time she hit the field, which was really, really good. And then if we look at Cloud, not so good. Um... So we have three deployments with zero mech kills and four other kills uh, with one injury. So, you know, once again, it's really, I think it kind of depends on sort of the initiative order that you go into. So she may have been doing a lot of damage and then um, Slim may have been cleaning the mechs up. You know, either way, it doesn't really matter. But that, that that's kind of how she's laid out. And in three days, you really can't tell, you know, how good a pilot's going to be or not going to be. But anyway, we'll just we'll leave those two at that. Then I'm going to have a look at sheet metal. Now, sheet metal we brought in earlier um, in the series, and then she just kind of got left by the wayside. Uh, she was the second melee mech pilot, and then at some point we just sort of stopped using a second melee mech um, for the second lance. Do we just? Uh, I believe for the longest time she was running a hunchback, and then it just kind of we stopped using that when we moved up into the heavies. So she kind of was sitting at the sidelines for a lot of the last, last half of the season. But she still had a lot, of, like a lot of skills here. But let's have a look at her service record. So she only had 20 deployments. Like I said, that was a lot earlier in the series, right? But she had 20 mech kills, which is a good one-to-one -one ratio, and 20 other kills. So she was killing two things every episode, or every deployment, which is great. Took, she took two injuries, which is like one in every 10 missions, which, you know, is not that bad, I guess. Um... So overall, I mean, that's actually a pretty good, I would take that with any pilot. Because if you figure, if, you, if you're deploying with up against two lances or a lance in a group of turrets or whatever, you'd expect every pilot to be killing at least two, um, whether it's a mech or a turret or a vehicle, two of anything. And it looks like she did that plus some. So that's, you know, that's pretty good. 
So now that we've gone through sheet metal, we're going to go through the second lance and we're going to start at the end and work our way back forward. So the last pilot was Diva. Yeah, Commander. We're going to have a look at her. She came in a little later in the series as well. Now she only had 24 deployments, but once again, 29 mech kills, which is pretty good, and 25 other kills. So, I mean, once again, she's killing, you know, two or two or more uh, every episode or sorry, every mission, um, <clears throat> which is great, right? That's what you're looking for in a pilot. And then if we move forward a little bit, we're going to go to Speed of Sound Sonic. Right here. Once again, she came in a little later in the series. So she had 41 deployments with uh, 27 mech kills and 28 other kills. Now, I don't, I don't know whether I want to blame this on the mechs that she was running. She was running the, the mech most of the time with um, the five SRMs. But, um, you know, so it's 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 below a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one ratio. But still, she did pretty good with a total of uh, 55 kills and 41 deployments. It's, it's okay. Um, so she didn't do too bad. And then if we go look at uh, Chupacabra, have a look at her and her service record here. So she had 39 deployments, a little less, uh, but 35 mech kills and 30 other kills. So it's pretty close to a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, she did pretty well. Two injuries taken, which is, you know, it seems to be par for the course. For every uh, 10 missions, you take one injury, roughly. Um, but later on, you'll see that's not necessarily the case. But in this case, that's kind of how it went. And then Satori, leader of the second lance. Now, Commander? I would have thought she would have been a little, had a little bit more. Um, but I, I, I keep forgetting, we ran the main lance most of the time. In this series, the second lance was far less uh, in play than in Jade Falcon Freeborn. So, if we have a look at hers, her service record, so she had 70 deployments, which isn't bad, with 62 mech kills and 45 other kills. So she, so she wasn't killing two per, but still, you know, you know, it's 107 kills in 70 deployments. So it's about what 1.5. So not too bad, I guess. Um, one ejection and three injuries taken. So, you know. 70 missions with one ejection. That's not too bad, I would imagine. And then let's look at the main lance. Now, Hot Dam was the replacement for Red Comet, so we'll look at her first because she came into the lance after uh, Red Comet sort of passed away. So she only had 53 deployments. It seems a lot more, but she had 53 with two injuries taken, 26 mech kills and 11 other kills. Now, her assist ratio, unfortunately, we can't see it here because she's got, you know, 37. So she had about, you know one kill every every sorry two kills every three deployments roughly um yeah one yeah two kills every three deployments roughly um but if we look at the assists that she did the number of times she had mechs tied up continuously and other people killed them uh was ridiculous so i can't really rate her on that aspect because once again she's a specialized mech pilot so it's tough to kind of um, way how well she did um, but in 53 deployments with you know 0.6 ratio 0.66 ratio it's not for the for a flamer mech I, I, I would say that's probably pretty good um, now we're getting into the heavy hitters here so let's go down and have a look at Sunflower um, now Fissadorn was saying he was interested to see how uh, the the um, sort of second lance leaders and the like you know mech pilots like sunflower who were sort of there from the beginning have, have done and she's actually quite good so let's have a look at her service record so she had 176 deployments which is tons right 197 mech kills and 96 other kills so that's what one 293 kills in total so uh it's about a 1.7 1.66, 1.7 ratio, which in 176 deployments is actually pretty good. She did take 10 injuries though, so it's one every 18 missions. So not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, the other kills being so low, I found it shocking, but uh, the mech kills at 197 is actually pretty impressive. So, okay, that's her. And then we'll have a look at Babi Egg. I want to show you Megasaur last because obviously she had the highest kills, but... Baba Yaga here, actually pretty good record, 184 deployments, 210 mech kills, 139 other kills. So we're looking at 349 in total. So almost a 2 to 1 ratio, 1 ejection and 16 injuries taken. So she did take a lot of injuries, but once again, I find the pilots that are 
unkillable, the, the you're basically your main pilots. I'll put in harm's way more than I will generally some of the other pilots, just because if they take the injuries or you know there's a potential for them to die, then they don't really die, right? You still keep them alive. So that's actually you know less than one in every ten missions. So it's you know it's pretty good, pretty good overall. So yeah, she's got almost a two to one kill ratio here, which is uh, once again really really good. So now let's have a look at Megasaur. And Megasaur was the brutal killer of this series for sure. Uh, at the end there, it's pretty much every time she attacked a mech, if she hit, it was a one shot. Um, that Black Knight, I swear to God, that's that's like the biggest OP mech I've had. Um, hitting for 750 some odd damage when the triple strength Myomars were up and um, she was using her Berserker skill. It was just crazy damage. Um, even against the salt mechs, that's like almost half of the en entire armor that the mech has. So um, it's still a lot of damage, and pinpoint strike to a CT was death for any mech. Um, even when she hit that uh, 200 tonner from behind there in the one of the last few episodes when she cored it, that was pretty cool too. So let's have a look at her service record. And she had 164 deployments with 248 mech kills and 132 other kills. So that's, uh, what, 380 kills for 164 deployments. So that's over a 2 to 1 ratio um, with 10 injuries taken. So that's pretty good. One in every 16 missions. So that's pretty darn good. So 380 is the number of mech kills to beat um, at 164, 164 deployments. So 2 to 1 ratio at, at 164 missions is pretty darn good, pretty darn consistent. Now earlier on she wasn't getting a ton of kills, but later in the game, like I said, the kills just started to rack up. She was just killing mechs like crazy. So, I don't know, I, I'm not sure. I, I Sometimes I felt feel like this would have should have been higher. Like when I look, first looked at these, I thought, okay, this should be a lot higher. Why is it so low? But then when you think, you know, a, a 2 to 1 or, or 2 uh, kill per deployment is actually pretty good for a pilot, and that's what you're expecting to see. Um, but you're not, you know, not every mission you're not always facing, you know, eight, you know, sometimes you're only facing four. So, and then other times you're facing 12 if you're doing um, uh, escorts or base defenders and stuff like that. But, you know, so I thought overall that's actually not that bad. And that is these mechs. So I think in terms of um, our major killers, obviously is Megasaur first. Uh, Baba Yaga didn't, didn't do too bad. She, I think she came in second with the total number of kills, but the ratio um, almost two to one, not quite as good. Uh, and then, of course, Sunflower here. Um, hers, her ratio was like 1.6, 1.7. A little lower in ratio for a higher higher number of deployments. So I think she probably came in third um, overall. And then you know, um, Good to go. yeah. Then the, like this, I can't really rate. Unfortunately, I can't really rate this second lance. I mean, you know, she's got a what 1.5 average Satori, um, but only with only seven missions, so it's like less than half. So who knows how how well she would have done um, carrying it forward. But yeah, so definitely the, the, the three pilots are uh, Megasaur first, uh, Baba Yaga second, and then Sunflower third. Um, all part of the main lance, of course. And it would have been nice to see how um, Red Comet had done it had she survived, but uh, that's it for this. So um, that's it for this particular series. Let's hop over now and have a look at uh, Jade Falcon Freeborn. Okay, now Falcon Freeborn, let's have a look at these guys. So unfortunately, we're not going to have the tally from the Flashpoint uh, as it went into a spin lock at the end of the last episode. If you've watched episode 120, you'll know what that was. Um, so I really don't have a, a final accurate count, but it's close enough, I think. Um, so let's quickly go and we'll have a look at the Memorial Wall. Now we lost a few more pilots here than we did with um, um, the Night Witches. So let's have a quick look here. So Sundance was killed in action, hit in the head by the enemy, by an enemy night gear. Um, yeah, she went down 57 deployments, four, uh, 74 mech kills and 47 other kills, which is pretty good. I mean, that's, that's uh, over a 2 to 1 ratio. So pretty good. She did take 5 injuries, which is about 1 in every, every 10 missions, uh, which is about average. So she did okay. 
blockade. Well, let's have a look at Shogun down here. 31 missions, 7 injuries taken. She's taken a lot of injuries with 18 mech kills and 13 other kills. So, you know, she's got like a 1-to-1 um, a -one -one ratio, which isn't, I guess it's okay for 31 deployments. Um, and then, yeah, blockade. Uh, 116 missions. We sort of lose these guys, that's for sure. 116 missions. Um, total kills of 209, which is almost a 2 to 1 ratio with 6 injuries taken. It's actually, you know, he was actually really, really good. I'm sorry to say that my my main lance was, was uh, taken in half, which was really kind of sucky. But And then we had uh, El Duce, who went down. 110 deployments, 210 mech kills, and 78, uh, six other kills. So once again, almost a 2 to 1 ratio with six injuries taken. So yeah, um, sad to see both of these two guys. I mean, all of them go, obviously, but these two here were, uh, I mean, they were, uh, all three of these pe people here were with us from day zero. Um, so it's kind of sad to see them go. Um, but now let's have a look at the mech warriors, and we'll see how we did here. So once again, we're going to go and start off with the earliest. Now, for some reason, these guys got a tremendous amount more experience than the Night Witches did. And I think it's part partly because uh, when you're playing clan mechs, you're always usually um, fighting tougher opponents. Um, we were taking a lot of missions kind of above our... Um, I don't want to say above our skull level. I mean, technically it was... Um, but it really wasn't above our group level. So um, we were able to gain experience a lot faster. Plus, I think in total, we spent more days in game um, with the with uh, Jade Falcon. So um, the game number of game days, I think we had like 3,000 and something on um, Night Witches. And I think it's a bit more here. But uh, once again, we're going to start off with the backup pilots here. And we'll have a quick look at them. So um, let's just start with Giant. Yes, I know you're always a pain. Uh, so she had 12 deployments with 14 kills and 9 other kills. So, you know, that's almost a 2 to 1 ratio, which is pretty good. And no injuries, which is great. So that's her. And then Eagle. Um... 15 deployments with 27 mech kills and 14 other kills. So that's almost a 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, so she did pretty well, especially for only 15 deployments. Um, she was she did really, really well. Um, so that's those two. Now let's have a look at the second lance first. And we'll start off with the uh, the greenest pilot, I guess. Well, here's the thing. We, had, we brought Avalanche into service before we brought Judge in. So we'll have a look at Judge first. Um... Now, Avalanche was out for a while simply because she was a melee uh, mech pilot and she was, was running as a backup pilot. But let's have a look at Judge here real quick. So she had 28 deployments with 38, or sorry, 34 mech kills and 21 other kills. So that's, what, 55? So it's, a, once again, a 2-to-1 ratio. So, she, you know, she did fairly well. And then Avalanche. Aye, aye. Let's have a look at her service record. So she had 21 deployments. Not, not very many deployments. Uh, like I said, because she wasn't being used a fair bit just because she had the uh, uh, Juggernaut ability and we weren't doing melee at all. So, um, But she managed to find her niche as the, uh, the Screamer pilot later on, which was kind of worked out really well. So 21 deployments, um, 32 mech kills with 13 other kills. So that's what, uh, 45. So once again, over a 2 to 1 ratio. So quite good for her. And then let's have a look at, uh, where are you here? Uh, Gaucho, who was basically uh, became the second most experienced pilot in the, pilot in the second lance. Um, and let's have a look, look at her service record. So once uh, 29 deployments with 30 mech kills and 27 other kills. So once again, almost a 2 to 1 ratio. Just below a 2 to 1. Um, very, very close. Um, and then Hannibal, who sort of took over as the uh, second lance leader. Um, she did have the um, the Juggernaut ability, but we ended up using her quite a bit. So let's have a look at her service record. So 52 deployments with 65 mech kills and 42 other kills. So, you know, 107 kills. Once again, two per deployment, um, or a little over two, with only two injuries taken. So, you know, she performed really, really well. Um, now, let's have a look at the main lance. 
So we're going to start off with Rhino and Six Pack because they basically took over for El Duce and um, um, oh my God, I can't remember this. <laughs> it's so long. Oh, I'm 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 so embarrassed now. Um, sorry, it's late at night too, and I'm tired. And blockade, my God, I couldn't remember his name for the life of me. That's so terrible. Um, yeah, so Six Pack and Rhino took over for them. So let's have a look at Rhino first and have a look at her service record so she had 66 deployments with 68 mech kills and 37 other kills so that's a you know about one point what six one point seven um yeah somewhere around there kill ratio with uh, two injuries taken and then six pack almost we were almost able to max his skills out let's have a look at his service record so he had 107 deployments with 120 mech kills and 58 other kills uh, three injuries taken, so what, 178? So yeah, just about 1.7, 1.8 ratio, kill ratio. So not bad for 107 deployments. Um, we'll have a look at Mockingbird Bird last for obvious reasons. But let's have a look at Griff right now and his service record. So 191 missions. Yeah, see, 3211. So we'll, a few more d extra days um, than... Um, than uh, Night Witches, but not not by many, like a couple hundred. So it's pretty close. But he had 191 deployments with 211 mech kills and 130 other kills. So that's what, 341. So uh, just below a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, and with 23 injuries though. 23! I still remember though early on he took a, he took a massive hit that would have killed him that had him out for like 72 days or something like that. Um, or was it 80? It, was it 86 or 72 or 86 days? It was quite a long time he was out for, uh, but that was like four injuries or five injuries right there. So he's he had taken several of those where he had taken a lot of injuries. So once again, if I can if I can put a mech warrior in harm's way, it, it will definitely be the leader of the unit because or the the leader of everything a company because you know they'll survive they'll survive to death. But 23 injuries is horrible. And then Mockingbird, um, surviving from the beginning right to the end. Let's have a look at her service record. So she had 200 deployments with 243 mech kills and 124 other kills. So a total of 367. So very, very close to Megasaur. But she did have more deployments, right? And she came under a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, now I think earlier, if this had had happened if we did this sort of in the first half of the um, season she definitely would have been above everybody because she was just murdering everything early in the, earlier in the game but then as the mechs got heavier and heavier um, it sort of slowly started to balance itself out with her kills she was definitely accurate I gotta say I think if I had to choose a mech pilot out of all the series that was incredibly accurate when we did called shots uh, it would definitely be her because she would hit her target most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time she would hit where we were shooting for. So, but yeah, so she did, she has less than a 2 to 1 kill ratio, but she has definitely the second second largest amount of kills. Um, but for 200 missions, the ratio is a lot lower, right? So if you look at Megasaur, the ratio is a lot lower. Um, so once again, the, the three main pilots would definitely be Mockingbird, and then Griff, and then Six Pack. Um, but I think in the series wise, I, I'm I'm gonna have to give it to uh, Megasaur with it like just narrowly in front of Mockingbird. Um, her performance, I think, in the last quarter, I think, yeah, about the last quarter of the series, um, started to taper off when we started to face a lot of super heavy mechs and things like that. It just became one of those things that whoever got the lucky shot on the final guy um, ended up with the kill. And when you're fighting mechs that are 100 tons or 150 or 200 tons, it just really is whoever comes up in the order that gets the kill. So it's not like you're taking on a pilot like a, one at a, like a mech one at a time. Um, or it's not like she was going last all the time and claiming all the kills. Uh, and unlike um, uh, Megasaur, who, as long as she could see the opponent, it was a guaranteed kill. Um, well, almost a guaranteed kill. Um, she really had to work for it. So, um, 
the only reason why I'd say Megasaur is probably number one in the entire uh, between the two series. Um, just one for the kill ratio. Um, and she really did start claiming a lot of kills in the, the last half of the season. Um, but two, just um, just uh, simply because the like the sheer number in the lower number of uh, um, deployments that she had. So if, we, if she was to go to 200 deployments, her kill ra her kill ratio would be like uh, obviously the number of kills would be way higher. So that's the only reason why I'm kind of giving it to her. But yeah, so that's it for this. Now you've had a good look at the pilots and where we were at. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the two series. And if you did, you know, my new series, once we get a stable version, of, like a really stable, hopefully beta version right now, the uh, Rotex and Alpha. And I've been hearing things that it's like, it's kind of really buggy. And, you know, if you want to try the Alpha version, go ahead. But I don't want to start anything in the Alpha version. I want to wait till it's relatively stable. And I know that the patches and the bug fixes that they're going to be making aren't going to break saves. And I really did enjoy the series. What I'm, I'm kind of upset about, though, is we never were, weren't able to complete this Flashpoint with a success at the end. I don't know why it went into that spin lock uh, at the end, but it certainly did. So I might do one more episode where we take this Flashpoint again just to finish it up and have it come out uh, actually being successful. That spin lock was hilarious. It kept giving me mechs over and over and over again. And no matter how long <laughs> I just started trashing all those mechs, it just kept giving me new ones over and over again. So I, I don't know. It may have had something to do with an overflow with all three mech bays. So because we had picked up three mechs, it may have gone into an overflow, at which point it was like, you know, it didn't really know what to do when I started trashing mechs. It just thought that there was... You know, I have, I have no idea. That's my only guess is that it went into that overthrow. So I'm going to end the episode here, guys. That's episode 121, having a look at the pilots. Uh, once again, I think ranking, ranking Megasaur number one with a very, very slim margin over Mockingbird coming in at number two. And then after that, of course, you know, Baba Yaga and stuff going down from there. Um, but yeah going to leave the episode here and I hope you enjoyed both series. Um, also, if you guys have any idea, like I'm always open to playing different kinds of games. If you want to see me play some other stuff, just, you know, drop a, drop a mention in the comment section. Um, I'm still enjoying seven days to die. So I'll probably be doing a little bit more of that. I haven't been doing much of that lately just because I wanted to get these done and uh, it's been so damn hot up here in the attic. It's really hard for me to do it. And I'm also going to finish up my Minecraft Invasion series that i got to finish up too. Uh, and then move on with some fresh stuff hopefully coming up in the next few weeks or so. Um, hopefully things will cool off a little bit. I am looking at picking up another microphone. I haven't just had a chance to go sit down and have a look at them yet and kind of go through and choose one. But I'll be doing that at some point too. So hopefully the sound will be a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please, please feel free to subscribe. And you can drop any comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, until next series, we'll see you later.